Hi everybody. Let's do a Biosolar derivation for a loop of current. The long current carrying wire gave us a, a very useful answer, but this one even has more applications than that. So Biosolar seems to be non-fundamental and it's not, but it has two very useful applications. What's the B field from due to a long current carrying wire? We did that one before. And what would it be for a, a single loop in a solenoid? So imagine a whole bunch of these coils, not just one, but you know, 50 of them, say. Uh, what would the B field be for one of them? And you can simply multiply by the number of coils to figure out the total B field. And there are a couple of arguments about what things we can cancel and how we're gonna do the uh, careful trig and the integral is going to be weird, so that's one of the, whenever we use these uh, Bios of our examples, you know that there are going to be some, some trickery at play, because it's not really a fundamental uh, expression. So let's start with the, here, let's look at this. The uh, ring is actually in the YZ plane. It's the X direction that we're going to care about is where the position, the point P is. It's a distance X away from the origin, which is the, uh, all in this case, the ring is place in a symmetrical uh, orientation. So the ring has a radius A, which is from zero out to A along in somewhere in the uh, YZ plane. The distance X is going to be a constant, A is going to be a constant, and the radius is actually going to be the same because position P, it doesn't matter where on the ring you select, they all have the exact same radius. So it's the, the current is flowing in the direction you see there with the, the arrow. The differential displacement along the direction the current is moving is called ds. This time we're not going to call it dx. dx is actually at a right angle to that. So uh, there's also this idea that theta is the angle between the radius vector and the yz plane. So that actually is going to make this a little bit easier to do. Uh, I would point out that that angle between the radius vector and the yz plane is the same as this radius, I mean this theta down here. So imagine breaking the B field due to this one little piece into its components. There's a perpendicular and a parallel. Parallels along the, the uh, x axis, so we're going to call that dbx. And you'll notice that we didn't bother to give dbperp a better name because by inspection all of the pieces of current flowing through this ring, all of the pieces of the ring have a dB perpendicular that's pointing away from the x-axis wherever it is on the ring, meaning that all of them are gonna cancel out. This happened with the E field as well, so it's not that weird. The only thing left over is dBx. So all of the individual elements around the ring will have a dBx, but the dB perpendiculars will cancel out. It's also worth noting right now that since S is completely contained within the YZ plane, the DS cross R hat is always going to be out of the page. So the D, DS vector cross with the R hat vector is always going to be out of the page. So that, that simplifies things a little bit. In fact, we're going to do like we did with the long current carrying, current carrying wire and just think about the magnitude of the B field since we know the direction is along uh, the X axis. So that makes this a simpler sort of step to do. So what's what can we actually simplify it? Let's see. Uh, db is going to be uh, mu naught i over, that's a naught, over 4 pi. And ds cross r, we know that this guy is unit 1. And since it's maintaining uh, its position in that plane, that's just ds. So we've got a ds there. Uh, r squared, so let's think about this for a minute. This is the distance r, this is the distance a, this is the distance x. So r squared is a squared plus x squared. They're both constants, and so is the radius. Uh, it makes sense. And actually, that's the entire expression. Uh, I will remind you, though, that we need to get just the x component. So dbx is all of that stuff. mu naught i over 4 pi times ds over a squared plus x squared, but it's the cosine of theta. So we only need this guy. Here's our, the main, here's the vector, here's the component x, that is theta, so it's cosine. So now it, we could also, here's a little, another little cheat. Cosine of theta is cosine of this theta here, a, x, r. Well, that's, you can rewrite that. 
uh, cosine then becomes a over, I don't want to mess this up, r squared. No, a over, a over r. So we'd have to write that as a squared plus x squared to the one half. Now we don't have to write that way, we could leave it as r, but since we've got an a squared plus x squared in our differential, if we put an a squared plus x squared to the one half down here, we can actually put everything in terms of just ds. This happened again, we did this when we uh, applied the same sort of symmetry to figuring out the E field at a point due to a, a charged ring. This is the B field due to a current carrying ring, but it's the same idea. So how does that help? All right, well, BX is now equal to, let's see, this is changed up a bit, mu naught I over four pi. <clears throat> uh, let's leave the DS all the way at the end. Hang on, that's still a differential there. I dropped the dB, so dBx, um, and then I've got cosine of theta right there, and ax plus a squared plus x squared, so I can make all of that a over quantity, a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves. So this guy times this guy, so it's to the 3 halves power, and there's my ds still in there. So now look. Constant, constant, these are obviously constants. A, X are all constant, are both constants. So to do this integral, it's now the B field in the X direction from the entire ring is going to be, look at all the stuff I can take out of the integral, uh, mu naught times I over 4 pi, and then I've got A over X squared, I mean A squared plus X squared to the 3 halves, and then it's now the closed integral of ds. Well, the closed integral of ds is just 2 pi times the radius of the ring. So this entire expression becomes mu naught i over 4 pi times, let's put this in brackets, a over a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves. That's why I wanted the brackets. And the integral of ds is just 2 pi times the radius of the ring, which is a. So look, pi's drop out, I'm gonna end up with an a squared. This two cancels with one of the twos there. Let's scroll a little bit. So the entire B field in the X direction, which is the only one that matters, is mu naught i a squared over two quantity a squared plus x squared to the three halves. And it's that kind of like we had before with the uh, the long current carrying wire. That is the, the answer, but it's not actually super descriptive. We need to let the position that we are, where we're particularly located, we need that to be in the middle. So let's imagine that, hang on, let's look back at our picture. Let's imagine that instead of P being a distance X away, we move it all the way back to the origin. So let X go to zero and then this expression becomes, so that's a squared to the 3 halves power, right? So mu naught i, we have an a squared on top, and we have an a, to the, a squared to the 3 halves power on the bottom, so an a cubed, so all over 2a. a squared divided by a squared to the 3 halves power. So a squared over a cubed, 1 over a. So the b field, we can, re, we can write this now in a, um, more general way, the B field in the middle of a single coil in a solenoid is mu naught i over 2a, where a is the radius of the ring. And if you have 50 rings, then you multiply by 50 to figure out the total B field. And this is a, a really important result because we're going to use solenoids to do, they do many things. You can make magnetic fields, you can use them as transformers, we can make electromagnets. There's so many different things you can do with a solenoid. So that's what this expression is found. Okay, cool.